Well, welcome back to another episode. I am Keeler Bryson, your host and founder of Teachable Life Moments. Today, I'm going to jump right in. I want to talk to you about four ways to reduce negative self-talk. You know, we all have that inner critic inside of us that tries to pop his or her head up uh, to stop us when we are trying something new and big and challenging that we've never done before. And uh, that inner critic has a way of definitely showing up at a time when we just do not want him or her to show up on the scene. Um, An inner critic sometimes can not totally be a bad thing. Sometimes it can help us and keep us motivated toward our goals. Um, Like if we're on a trying to eat healthy, that inner critic will remind us that, oh, you're not supposed to eat that or you're not supposed to drink that. And that's good and that's fine. But um, today's episode is focusing in on how this little voice can often be more harmful than helpful, particularly when uh, we start experiencing an excessive amount of negativity from this little inner voice or negative self-talk as as some may recognize it. Um, Negative self-talk, when it's excessive, it can bring us down. It can discourage us. It can cause us to be depressed and feeling helpless and hopeless. And um, therefore, we've got to get it under control. You know, this is the year where many of us are trying to achieve some goals. And many of those goals are things that we've never um, tried to attempt to accomplish. And therefore, it's going to require a whole lot of positive, healthy self-talk. We've got to get out of our head. We got to get out, especially if it's negativity that we are entertaining. So what is negativity? Negativity can take many forms. Um, it can sound grounded. For example, you could say, I'm not good at this, so I should avoid attempting it for my own personal safety. And then um, self-talk can negative self-talk can be downright mean. When was the last time you said something that was downright mean and negative about yourself? Oh, my goodness. And the thing about negative self-talk, it can sound a lot like a critical parent. You know, that's why a lot of times you hear folks telling parents, be careful how you speak to and over your children, because the things that we say to our children can cause them to be paralyzed and to not have Uh, strong and healthy self-confidence when they need it to try to achieve certain things in their future. Negative self-talk can also sound a lot like a negative family member, um, a negative teacher, or a negative friend. How many of us have experienced that teacher that says some negative things to us? And for some, you can find these folks that have grown up into adults and they still remember a negative Um, word or conversation that a teacher spoke over them. And a lot of times when I run across, you know, classmates or hear of other folks sharing how one of their classmates after 30 years of being after school, that person still remembers those negative words and that their teacher said about them. 30 years later, that is still impacting them. And so you can see why it's so important to manage and reduce this negative self-talk in our daily lives, because it is a paralyzer and it is something that can stop us. And um, I don't know about you, but I have too many things that I would like to achieve in my lifetime. And negative self-talk is one of those things that definitely has to be in check. You have to check yourself in that negative self-talk and remind yourself that this is not going to be tolerated. We have no energy (laughs) for foolishness, no energy for negative self-talk. Now, when it comes to positive self-talk, I'm for it. And I definitely can muster up some energy to speak positively to myself. So what are the four ways that we can reduce negative self-talk in our daily lives? Number one, We've got to expose our inner critic. 
You got to admit that you have an inner, a negative inner critic. Um, a lot of times it happens so quickly, so effortlessly until we don't realize that that conversation has started. And so we've got to learn to notice when we're being self-critical so we can just stop it. Stop it as soon as we notice it. And uh, one way we can do that, here is a challenge for you. So put a rubber band around your wrist. It can be your left wrist or your right wrist. It doesn't matter. Put it on at the start of the day. And each time you notice that you made a negative remark about yourself or you were engaged in some negative self-talk, pull the rubber band back and let it pop you on the wrist. Now, at the end of the day, if your wrist is red and sore, then you know you've had a whole lot of negative self-talk taking place. But if your wrist is not red and sore, then you know that, huh, you pretty much got this negative self-talk under control to the extent where you're not doing it. You figured out a way to prevent it from happening. Now, some people are not going to make it, you know, to the end of the day. Uh, before their wrist is just super red and super sore. Um, I can I can guarantee you that. And that's because, you know, this is not an easy task. This thing has been happening since many of us were children. And so it's not an easy task. Some of us going to find our wrist super red and super sore probably before lunchtime. And that's fine. The whole point of this little exercise is to help you be consciously aware that you've had a whole lot of negative self-talk and perhaps maybe none at all. At any rate, let me know how how those results turn out. Number two, give your inner critic a nickname. Now, I know when I say that, I know most of you may instantly think about the skit on Saturday Night Live with Debbie Downer. You know, Debbie Downer was the type of chick where she found the negative in any situation. And no matter how many times someone tried to be positive, Debbie Downer just always found, had something negative to bring you down. Do you know any Debbie Downers in your life, in your family, in your sphere of influence? Are you a Debbie Downer? (laughs) Think about that. Are you always thinking about the negative in any situation? Oh my goodness, if it's you, we have got to get you some help because whatever you you are saying and thinking becomes your reality. And so if all you are engaged in is negative thinking, negative talking, then it will manifest a negative life, a negative experience in your life. Now, the reason we, we want to give our inner critic a nickname because it helps us to basically uh, force ourselves outside of the situation. And in other words, when we give our inner critic a nickname, it's almost as if we're saying that's not me, that's her. Therefore, I don't have to agree with him or her because uh, that's really not me. That's her ridiculous thoughts. And therefore, I don't have to uh, agree with it. I don't have to accept it. I don't have to uh, believe what Debbie Downer is saying. In fact, I'm going to do what number three is giving us. And number three is to cross-examine your inner critic. So since Debbie Downer, let's say your inner critic is Debbie Downer, we're going to cross-examine Debbie Downer. You know, you're you're basically detaching yourself from her and giving her that nickname because you're recognizing it as a force outside of yourself, okay? So number three is cross-examine your inner critic. One of the most damaging things about negative self-talk is that it often goes unchallenged. Most people don't challenge it. Most people just kind of sit there and believe and receive whatever this Debbie Downer or whatever our nickname is for our inner critic is. And as a result, you end up believing it and then maybe feeling down or depressed, but it's time to challenge your inner critic, call him or her out and ask, is this true? Is this an exaggeration? Um, And then when you call yourself out, it'll help you 
to take away some of the damage and influence of negative self-talk because the thing about cross-examination, the whole point of it is to reveal the lies, <laughs> the exaggerations, and to find out what the truth is. And many times, negative self-talkers do not cross-examine the, their negative inner critic. They don't even challenge it. And so step number three wants you to cross-examine to find out the truth and to expose the lies. Number four, the fourth thing that we want to do to reduce that negative self-talk is to shift and reframe your perspective. You know, sometimes looking at things in the long term can help us realize that we may be placing too great an emphasis on something. You know, for example, if you're dealing with negative thoughts, self-talk, ask yourself, is this really going to matter in five or 10 years? Because if it's not, then you definitely need to shake that off and let it go. You know, when we do this, if we shift and reframe our perspective, it helps us to often minimize the negativity and the fear and the urgency in the negative self-talk. Sometimes when we um, look at it from a positive perspective, it helps us to realize an opportunity in whatever the negative self-talk is. It helps us to realize that, oh, you know what? This is not as bad as it seemed. I just need to flip this from a negative conversation into a positive. For example, if you're having negative self uh, talk about you, you know, suggesting that you may fail in a new business venture or, you know, that you're never going to find the perfect mate or what have you, or that you're going to lose if you go out and try to take this risk. In each of those scenarios, you need to flip the script and say, no, I may not lose. I, I can also win or I will find the perfect mate. You know, you flip it into a positive because what you say is what will become your reality. I'm sure you can bear witness of that, especially if you've already been doing a whole lot of negative self-talk. You probably have a whole lot of negative uh, outcomes and uh, negative manifestations as a result of that. So why not? Flip your perspective, get positive, get, um, look for the opportunity in whatever the negative self talks that you're having with, within your head. Now, one way to reframe negative self talk is to affirm it with an affirmation. Uh, we know that affirmation is basically, um, confirming what we affirm. And affirmations are a great, great, great way to do that. You get up and you just begin to speak positively over your life, over your situations, over your circumstances. And there is a great app that I want to recommend to you to help you with that. It's called the Think Up app. Um, and the way that it works, you can go out and listen to already pre-recorded affirmations or it allows you to create and record your own affirmations to music. And you can play these affirmations as many times as you like. I often have them playing when I'm working in the office in the background and I uh, have them playing um, when I go to bed at night on low, just so that it can get down into my conscious and subconscious of the positive things that I'm speaking over my life. So those are the four ways that you can reduce negative self-talk. I hope that you find them helpful. And by all means, share, share, share your feedback and your results. If you are guilty of negative self-talk, let me know if any of these tips help you and which one resonated with you the most. This is Keeler Bryson, and you have been listening to the Teachable Life Moments with Keeler Bryson Podcast. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you haven't already done so, go to the Apple Podcast and rate and review today's show. Join me next week for another Teachable Life Moment, and thank you for listening.